this is Nina Curley of Wamna Media. I'm standing here with Tony Haddad, the founder and general manager of Technica, an automated solutions company that was just ranked number seven uh, in Lebanon in the Arabia 500 regional rankings yesterday. Tony, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you enjoying the conference so far? Yesterday was good, networking with people in the um the people who made it in business, it's good to network with these people and I just came into the conference and it seems okay. So tell us about Technica, what's the idea, what do you guys supply? Um, in 1982, just during the invasion of Lebanon by Israel, uh, I had this big dream that uh, I want to build equipment in Lebanon and sell it to the world. That was a crazy dream at that time, we were too small to do that. And eventually, now after 30 years, what we do is we manufacture automation equipment that we sell to the food and beverage industry, bottling lines, dairies. We build some equipment in the line and we integrate with partners from Europe to complete a turnkey line to make milk, juice, water or any liquid uh, beverage. And uh, we're based in Lebanon. We have 140 people in the company, engineers and technicians mostly. Uh, we cover 32 countries. In in terms of customers and we have branches in seven places. So this is where we are at after 30 years. So you're serving the region, those seven countries are in the region? Yes, seven countries. We have offices ranging from Nigeria in Africa to uh, Saudi, Dubai, uh, Egypt, uh, Lebanon of course, Cyprus and mostly in the region. Uh, we also sell to Europe but in Europe that would be a direct sale. We don't have any offices yet in Europe. I see. And how did you build the company starting in 1982? I mean, how did you overcome the political challenges at that time? Well, in 1982, I was a maintenance engineer installing equipment for a corrugated plant in Lebanon. And every time I was installing the equipment, I was looking at it and saying, why can't we build it? And I started building this idea that we should be building the technology to build equipment like this in Lebanon and serve the local market instead of getting equipment from Europe and from USA. At that time that was most of the equipment were coming from USA and Europe. So that was my big dream, my what I call it a BHAG, the big hairy audacious goal. And I left employment, I was well paid at that time and everybody said you're crazy. I mean look at the invasion, wait some time and uh, see if it settles before you go into a venture like this. And I wanted to follow my dream, so I left employment. I had my company, we were only four people in a small workshop, 40 square meters. And we started building equipment for the local market, slowly, slowly growing to become an approved vendor to multinational companies like Procter & Gamble, Pepsi-Cola, Nestle, and all the big names. So did you hedge your risk by going after global clients? How did you initially gain your first client? How did you break into that market? Well, a key driver for the uh, growth of the company was uh, basically, I mean, we, we started locally in Lebanon and we're serving lo the local market. Then we expanded a little bit to Saudi. But uh, during the Gulf War, uh, most of the European and American companies left Saudi because of the what they considered a risk. For me, it was not a risk at all because we live this every day. I mean, bombs is something part of our daily life. So. I set up an office in Saudi and I was serving the local market and people realized that uh, this company is coming while everybody is leaving so they started giving us big orders and this is where we started really our growth path. From there we went to uh, big contracts and from there we uh, started doing uh, small projects with multinationals. We started with Procter & Gable in the year 2000 with a small project. Another key driver is that the multinational companies like P&G, they want to, de to develop local companies to provide what they consider not critical equipment in the process. And conveyors are not critical equipment. So we had the opportunity to develop some conveyors for P&G. And from there on, we were building our business with P&G. And that, of course, is hedging the risk because now we're counting on multinational companies who have projects all over the world. Now we have projects. We got an order last month from Procter & Gamble in India. We're working on a project for Procter & Gamble in Mexico, in Casablanca. We have a project in Cairo. So that's, in a way, is really mitigating the risk. If something goes wrong in the area, we have another outlet, which is beyond the area of the geography. And we installed a line in Mataro, and that was the line that really put us on a global platform with PNG. Because after that, we got a letter of approval saying that Technica is on the BI list of PNG, which is the buyer instruction list, which means that any PNG plant in the world, when they need conveyors, they go to the list and they see Technica and they contact us. As a matter of fact, we got an inquiry from Germany and from Russia for conveyors to go into that place. So, 
So sometimes war is an impediment, but sometimes it's an opportunity. Sure. Um, so, but you also mentioned to me that, you know, since you scaled and now that you're established and clearly swiftly growing, um, you now have challenges because you're a family business and you're trying to pass it on through the family. Um, how are you facing that challenge now? Well, after 30 years now, I decided that in five years from now, I have to let go. I mean, what I built in 30 years, I have to pass it to the second generation. And that's the challenge of the continuity. Uh, the company has to stand by itself, not only depending on the charisma of the founder. So in five years, we're working on a uh, PGP plan, personal development plan for the leaders so that they can have the competences required to lead the company. And in five years, we're designing a successor to the CEO, so I'll not be a CEO in five years. And for this, we are, we are going into a family governance program, a corporate governance program, and a succession plan, a systematic program, and we set a deadline of five years to do so. I see. And um, as you look to exit as CEO, um, would you consider starting something else today? And if you did, or if, if one of your kids did, um, what would your advice to an entrepreneur today be? What would be different today, aside from you know the differences in the political landscape? Well, uh, I would say that, and I said it in my presentation, in my family business presentation, uh, to any entrepreneur, or entrepreneur would be entrepreneur, if you have a dream, drop everything and follow your dream. Because you'll not be happy unless you fulfill your dream. And if you have enough faith in yourself, enough determination, goodwill, and if you are, if you are a hard worker, you can achieve your dream. What we did during the years of war was impossible unless these ingredients are there. So, and I learned something in 30 years, and I tell it to all entrepreneurs, it's not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. So don't wait for the storm to pass. Don't think that today are not good days to be entrepreneur. I will not take any risk today because you're not sure tomorrow will be better than today. So instead of waiting for the storm to pass, learn how to dance in the rain and don't stop. That's my advice to everybody. I see, but it also seems like a key ingredient was finding ways to mitigate your risk. Would you advise another entrepreneur the same? Would you give another entrepreneur now the same advice? Of course. I mean, uh, going into entrepreneurship and going into business is taking risks, of course, and uh, taking decisions involve risk. It doesn't have to be a uh, uncalculated risks. I mean, he has to calculate the risk, look at the opportunities, look at the viability of the project, and if he believes in his project, if he pursues his project, he will be successful. Thanks so much for chatting with us, Tony. Thank you.